Hi Dragonflies! Have you ever tried painting in a round format? Or tried imagining what one of your paintings would look like if you cropped it into a round format? Or just played in your sketchbook with a round format? Patterns like this are a fun place for me to play around with paints and colors without having to think too much about where I'm going to put things. If you want to create a round design and you don't happen to have a compass, you probably do what I do. Use something like a plate as your template for drawing a circle. If you just want to draw or paint inside a circle, then that's all you need. But what if you want to divide your circle up to make some sort of symmetrical design like one of these? Dividing your circle up into six parts is especially handy if you want to make a color wheel. If you happen to have a compass that makes large enough circles and remember a few things from high school geometry, this is pretty easy. But if you have that kind of drafting equipment and knowledge, you don't need my help. So this is for everyone else who either doesn't have those tools or, like me, is sometimes too lazy to drag them out when it's time to do a project. All you need for this is a piece of ordinary office paper. I'm using cardboard in this first step because it shows up a little better, but copier paper or printer paper is what you really want. You're going to put one corner right on the circle itself and then mark the two places where the circle hits the sides of the paper. Again, I'm using colored markers here to make it easier for you to see on the video, but you would want to use a light pencil mark. Then I'm going to connect the two dots. When we use something that has a right angle, like our piece of copier paper, to do this, it gives us a diameter of the circle. So for all of you who wondered in high school geometry, when am I ever going to use this, here's the inscribed angle theorem to the rescue. Now we simply repeat the process, putting the corner of our piece of paper on a different spot and marking a new diameter. And the center of the circle is where those two diameters cross. Now you can line up the edge of your piece of scrap paper with the edge of your watercolor paper or drawing paper to get a nice vertical line. And of course you can just mark it and use a more sturdy straight edge to draw the line if you need to. Then you can use it to find where to mark your horizontal line through the center. And now you have your circle evenly divided in quarters. Just a reminder, I'm using markers so you can see this on the video. You would use very light pencil lines. To divide our circle into eighths, we need to be able to measure a 45 degree angle. And this is where the cardboard has to get set aside and paper really works better. I'm just going to fold my paper on the diagonal, matching up the top and one side, and I'll have a 45 degree angle measure. And I can just use this to indicate where to divide up my quarters into eighths. And once I've done this for the bottom, I can just extend these lines through the center to divide up the top of my circle as well. To create a repeating pattern like this, all I need to do is draw my design in one of my sections and then use tracing paper or acetate to copy and transfer the design to the remaining sections. If you need help learning how to transfer designs to watercolor paper, I'm going to point you to the video I already made about that. In many cases, I figure out my design on a piece of drawing paper and then transfer it to my watercolor paper when I have the whole design the way I want it. To divide my circle into thirds or sixths, I'll start in the same way by finding the center of the circle. And notice I don't have to draw the entire diameter, just a section of it that I'm pretty sure is near the center with a light pencil mark. And that will be enough to find where the center is. Now I'll place my plate so it just touches that center point and mark the places where it crosses the circle. Then I'm just going to turn my paper around so that I can get to it a little more easily and repeat this, placing the plate so it touches the center and one of the dots that I just made, and I mark on the other side where it crosses the circle. These three dots divide the circle into thirds, so if you wanted to do a very simple design, you could simply connect these dots to the center and have your circle divided in thirds. Or if you draw your lines all the way through to the opposite side, you'll have your circle divided in sixths. 
A fun variation on this is to draw the whole arc from one side of the circle to the other instead of just marking the points. This gives you a three-fold petal design. If you want six petals, all you need to do is go ahead and divide your circle up into sixths so that you'll find the points on the circle to connect with arcs to make the other three petals. So there you go. For January, I invite you to try using a circular format, either a symmetrical design like this that you paint and then perhaps embellish like I like to do with some metallic markers or gel pens, or in my case, a dip pen with some metallic ink. I often work on these a little bit over a long period of time, maybe five or 10 minutes to warm up at the start of a painting session, or a little bit in the evening to just relax and not have to think too much. Much more fun for me that way than pressuring myself to finish in one session. Or you might just use them for practical things like exploring different color palettes or color schemes. And of course, you don't have to treat each section exactly the same, or even have sections at all. I hope this makes it easier and less intimidating for you to try some circular designs of your own. Hope you have fun with it, and I'll see you next time. Happy painting!